G'day guys, uh, I wanted to make this video for you today as a bit of an introduction to uh, the new unit that we're starting um, and as as part of that I thought I would just mention to you a little bit of, uh, do a little video on biochemistry today particularly looking at one of the groups of biomacromolecules so there are four major groups of biomacromolecules we've got the proteins, lipids, nucleic acids and carbohydrates and today what we're going to do is focus on the carbs, the carbohydrates now these are a group of molecules made up of carbon, hydrogen and oxygen. It's the different ratio of these three elements that produces uh, quite a bit of diversity in terms of carbohydrates. And they're broken down and we can separate the carbs into different groups. So we've got things called uh, simple carbohydrates and we've also got complex carbohydrates. And the function of carbohydrates in the body, or in li not just in the body, sorry, in living things, uh, a couple, couple of different functions. We've got uh, energy. Okay, so carbohydrates are a form of chemical energy that we can use. They also have a function as structural components in living things. And we're going to look at some molecules which relate to those very soon. So let's again have a look at uh, what a simple carbohydrate uh, is. Now, Again, within simple carbohydrates, I'll just fix up that A, we've actually got two groups. So we've got the monosaccharides, monosaccharides, okay, monosaccharides, and we have disaccharides, D, I, sorry about the writing here will get better as we go on. Okay, so the main difference between these two words that you might tell is the prefix at the start. Here we've got di and over here we've got mono and both uh, both words end in saccharide. So a saccharide is simply the scientific word for sugar. So carbohydrates are saccharides which means they are sugar molecules. Now, what does mono mean? You might have heard this thrown in before. Um, <clears throat> you may have heard the term monobrow before, like this, this guy here. And what mono actually means is one. So monobrow, as in this uh, chap here, his monobrow means he's got one eyebrow. Right, so monosaccharide is a sugar unit made up of just one molecule. Okay, A disaccharide, uh, again, saccharide just means a scientific word for sugar. <coughs> so disaccharides are components made up of two sugars. Okay, di, like is in carbon dioxide here, which is a, a compound made up of one carbon and two oxygen atoms, uh, and those two oxygens are termed dioxide. So disaccharide means a molecule, carbohydrate made up of two sugars. We've got some examples down here. So firstly we've got the monosaccharides over this side, okay, and we've got the disaccharides over this side. So glucose and fructose are examples of monosaccharides. Uh, and if you see here, we've got the general formula. I'll just change colour so you can see that a bit better. Um, over here, we've got the general formula. Oh, general formula here, C6H12O6. And you'll notice that fructose, it's a different molecule. It's actually got the same chemical formula. So it's the physical composition, the way the element, the atoms, sorry, are arranged in these two molecules, which makes them different and gives them their different properties. The general formula for these monosaccharides, or for sugars, is C... H two O C H two O. Let's put brackets around that. N, okay, and N is equal to the number of carbons. So here we've got six carbons. So we're going to have twice as many hydrogens and an equal number of oxygens. If, for example, the number of carbons was uh, was ten, okay. If, for example, it was, all right, we'd have C ten H twenty O ten, okay. But we don't, so that's not quite right. So N equals the number of carbons. Now over here we've got um, we've got sucrose which is a disaccharide. Now this is a sugar that you're probably pretty common with. It's one that you put in your drinks. You've got a cup of tea or a Milo or something like that. Sucrose is table sugar. And it's actually formed when we combine a glucose and a fructose unit together. Now if we did that you would assume that you know using these two chemical formulas here, even this chemical formula uh, we might expect that the the formula would be C12H24O11, but if you look closer, this is actually C12H22O11. So we're missing uh, two hydrogens, 
and one oxygen from what we would expect to have for a, the general formula for a for a sugar. Okay, because uh, here we got hydrogen is not twice as much as the as the C in this case as our formula would suggest. So we've lost or we're missing uh, two hydrogens and an oxygen somewhere, or a water molecule has gone missing. Now, this is very important. We can produce more complex molecules like the sucrose by combining single units together. So by adding two monomers together, uh, like glucose and fructose, we can produce sucrose. When we do that, okay, uh, or when this happens, it's called a condensation reaction. Condensation. Right, just like you get on the shower door or the windows on certain days, right, it's when water forms. Condensation is when water is formed. It's a type of reaction where water is formed. So what happens is this little group here, I don't say little bit, this group here on the glucose unit and this group here on the fructose unit combine. Okay, we've got an OH there and a H, so that makes H2O, and we're left with this little oxygen there on its own, plus O. So that O that's left forms a glycosidic bond, and that's it there, okay, a glycosidic bond which holds the two sugar units together. So through a condensation reaction we can build up the single units to, um, again to form a more complex molecule here so by combining two monosaccharides together we can form a disaccharide like sucrose. Uh, other examples we've got of, um, of uh, a disaccharide are things like uh, galactose which is formed by I think it's uh, I think lactose uh, sorry lactose is the name of the disaccharide and it's formed by galactose and glucose which are also uh, monosaccharides. Alright, the third type of, uh, or the second major group of uh, carbohydrates are the complex carbohydrates, which I mentioned before. Okay, and complex carbs are also called polysaccharides. Now I've got a little image here to help us understand what this word means. Okay, so polysaccharides. Now, saccharides, remember, is the scientific word for sugar, because carbohydrates are sugar groups. All right. In this case, uh, poly. You might have seen this word before. I've got an image here which represents polygamy. All right. That's one way to pronounce it. Polygamy is a mating system in biology where one male controls or has access to breeding with many females. So poly means many. Uh, gamy here relates to female, okay, so polygamy means many females to one male. So this guy, this looks like the male in here, and uh, there's probably his females around here, and he controls the breeding rights of those. So poly means many. In this case, polysaccharide means many sugars. So polysaccharides are more complex because they're made up of many sugars. There's a few groups we'll look at here. We've got starch, cellulose, and glycogen. Now starch, we'll start off with, is a energy storage energy storage chemical in plants. Okay, potato is a good example of that. You eat a potato, you're eating very starchy food. Alright, um, We'll jump down to glycogen and we'll go back to cellulose in a second. Glycogen is energy storage. In animals. Animals. Sorry, just having a bit of issues with my writing here. Alright, so starch is an energy storage in plants. Right, starch is an insoluble chemical, which is uh, quite important for plants because it has a little effect on their osmotic balance, which is another video altogether. Um, glycogen, energy storage in animals. Now, you may have heard that uh, if you eat heaps and heaps of sugar and you don't use it, it's converted to, to fat. Well, that's true, but before it gets to fat, it's uh, converted to glycogen. So when you consume sugar, um, your body will use it as a source of energy. 
fat that it doesn't use can be stored in the liver or in muscles. But then again, if we keep consuming the excess sugar, uh, whatever can't be stored in the liver or the muscles gets converted uh, to fat. All right, thirdly here we've got um, cellulose, which is a little bit different to these two. So here we've looked at energy storage, or that's what the purpose of starch and glycogen are, they're energy storage for plants and animals. Cellulose, the function of cellulose is actually as a structural component. So it's a carbohydrate, a polysaccharide, but its function is not for energy, but as a structural component. Now cellulose is found in every plant cell wall, which makes it one of the most abundant compounds uh, in the world. Right, and, very, and bundles of cellulose make very, very tough fibres, which is really important for plants to maintain, uh, to maintain a bit of strength. All right, um, now a derivative of cellulose, uh, which is called chitin, okay, is, so uh, cellulose is a structural component of plants, chitin is a derivative of cellulose, and this is the main component in an insect exoskeleton. Okay, so the outer part of an insect is composed mainly of chitin, which is a carbohydrate, and I might run out of a bit of room here, so I'll try to do it. Small exoskeleton. Okay, so again, that's uh, an example of where a carbohydrate can actually be a structural component of an, of an animal or a non-plant. All right, and we've also got another example here, um, another derivative of cellulose is pectin. Okay, and pectin is uh, a, a chemical or carbohydrate which helps bond cells um, or helps bond cells of the cell wall and plants together. So it sort of appears between cells, but it helps them bond together. All right. So just as a bit of a quick review, we've got um, we've got carbohydrates are made up of um, carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. We've got uh, monosaccharides. With this formula, uh, CH2ON, and we looked at we've got glucose and fructose. Okay, we've got the disaccharides. Uh, we've got sucrose. We looked at. Um, and we've got the polysaccharides, um, starch, cellulose, and glycogen. Okay. Um, we know that through condensation, okay, we can build up, we can build up monosaccharides into disaccharides, and we can also build them up into polysaccharides as well. So, condensation reaction is where water is produced, and we can have more complex molecules formed from uh, more simple ones. So, again, we start with a monosaccharide, and we combine those together to form disaccharides, and then if we keep on combining them together we get more complex molecules called polysaccharides. Now, in your diet, simple carbohydrates like uh, monomers, monosaccharides and disaccharides are good for quick energy because they can be broken down or absorbed very, very quickly in your body. Um, things like complex carbohydrates such as starch, or uh, they're going to take a lot longer to break down your body because we're not just talking about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven single units here. We're talking about hundreds of thousands of them combined together. And it takes a very long time for your body to break down all these bonds so that the uh, the molecules are small enough to be absorbed and then actually used by your body. So the simple sugars are good for uh, energy when you need it quickly um, and the complex carbohydrates are better for long-term energy usage. They take a lot longer to break down. All right, now that's just a quick, sum uh, quick summary, a quick review, I guess, of the, um, the carbohydrates. Got a a website at the top here or the blog that I'd like you to check out and then this will be a good site for us to discuss some of the things online. Hope you enjoyed the video 
and um, there'll be a few more up pretty soon and hopefully they're helpful for you as well. Any questions, just let me know. Cheers.